So in cellular wireless, handoff is possible. Now, what is multi-hoop wireless? In multi-hoop wireless, basically we have so many uh, wireless like rings. You, you can say here, here we have so many devices, like one, two, three, four devices we have. So we may need, we, actually what happens is I cannot connect first to fourth directly, okay, because there is no direct route. So I want to connect first to fourth, I need to go to each of these. So I need to go to multiple links. I need to traverse through multiple links. Okay. So multiple hope means we need to traverse multiple links to reach the destination. We need to traverse multiple links to reach the destination. So in this case, your mobility, when you move, when your device will uh, change one location to another location, your mobility causes route changes. Y your route routing uh, can change okay if, if your fourth one comes to uh, nearby your one it doesn't go to second and third and it will go to fourth okay if it is far away from first one it will go to second and then third and then fourth okay so this is how it will, it will go from multiple links if it is near it comes near to the first one it will directly go to the fourth so your mobility basically causes your route changes okay your route will change as per your mobilities so that is why we called uh, uh, ad hoc network, which is kind of mobile. There is host movement frequently. The, the host will be uh, moving frequently here in this case. And because of that movement, your topology, your network topology will always change frequently. The network topology will always change frequently because you are basically changing from your location. So your routing will also change depending upon the situation, but upon the position of your uh, devices. Okay. Here in this case, we don't need any cellular infrastructure. No need of cellular infrastructure, like we don't need any tower in this case. We just want peer to connection. So it's ad hoc networks. Okay. Multiple hope wireless links we need here in this case. Multiple hope wireless. If you want to communicate to the further, uh, we want some intermediate nodes. We want some intermediate devices. So data must be routed by intermediate nodes. So if you want uh, A to B communication, it will go like this a then you can say b and c you can say intermediate nodes sorry you can say d and e as intermediate nodes, and then you go, go to the b so that is how it works actually your mobile uh, ad hoc networks any questions uh, regarding uh, what is ad hoc networks any questions are you all able to hear me well there audio video both are good for all the users Everything is good there. So why we are uh, studying this ad hoc networks is like uh, there are, there is some flexibility which which will be given by this ad hoc networks. Like setting of fixed extensions and backbone infrastructure is not always viable. Some disadvantages of infrastructure. Okay, so you can't. Uh, always set up your fixed access points okay you can't access always your routers your backbone infrastructure which is not actually viable in each and every possible conditions so infrastructure may not be present in disaster area or like a war zone in case of military zone area you cannot create an infrastructure over there you just need an ad hoc network so that one device can connect to another device and they can communicate easily without having any infrastructures that is what basically an ad hoc network is okay and it basically works in a practical range or a short range radios like Bluetooth works for the range of meters. So you can actually connect two devices with the Bluetooth communication and those will become ad hoc network. Okay. But in Bluetooth technology, we, we call it as B-Cornet and Scatternet. That is different case. Okay. So ad hoc networks do not need any backbone infrastructure support and are easy to deploy. These are very easy to deploy and useful when infrastructure is absent and destroyed and uh, destroyed or may destroyed or impractical. Okay. Where there is not possible to uh, make your infrastructure or your uh, towers, which will you basically work as your access point, or it will basically work uh, as your uh, like uh, routers. We we will go for an ad hoc network. Okay. So what are the basic man, uh, basic applications where we basically use this uh, ad hoc networks, like uh, personal area networks? If you want to connect some personal area networking, 
So we will go for like cell, cell phone, laptop, earphone, wristwatch. We want to connect all these things. We will go for hot networks. Military environments like soldiers or tanks and planes will use. They want to communicate from tank, tanks to planes, planes to soldiers like this. So they will go for this application at hot networks. Civilian environment like taxi cab networking. Uh, one, one taxi driver want to communicate to another taxi driver. Uh, so they, they want to communicate to each other. They will go for hot networks. Meeting rooms, sports stadiums. Okay. Boats, small aircrafts, okay. Emergency operations, uh, emergency operations like uh, search and rescues and policing and firefightings. Okay, these are some uh, areas where we basically use ad hoc networks. So these are some basic applications where we can use this uh, ad hoc networks. Is my voice is audible to all of you? My voice and video. Any questions up to here? Is my voice is audible? Any questions? So you'll go for uh, what are the basic in mobile environments, okay? There are some challenges which we need to face in mobile environments, like uh, there's the limitations of the wireless networks, like packet loss due to transmission errors. If we have some transmission errors, your packet can loss, okay? Variable capacity links, your capacity that your bandwidth, here we are talking about bandwidth, your variable, uh, that is your uh, bandwidth is variable actually in this case. Frequency disconnections, um, your, if, if your connection is disconnected, basically what happens is uh, there will be a frequent disconnections and partitions. Limited communication bandwidth as we already discussed, like broadcast nature of the communication. Generally in this case, uh, the routing routing which will, will be done by usually like broadcasting your packets because we never know what is connected and what is going to be connected next. Okay, so we just broadcast some packets. We will, we will go in some routing. And the, Comes, you will see how actually routing happens when you want to connect to another uh, newly device, newly added device. How it basically added to the uh, routing uh, network? Okay, so so there are limitations which will be imposed by your wireless networks, and there are limitations which will be imposed by mobility also. Mobility in the sense like here the devices are cha uh, changing their places or their location dynamically. Okay. So when the mobility happens, your topologies and the routing algorithms will also depends and it will also change. Your topology of the network will also change. Okay. So lack of mobility awareness by system and applications. And there are some limitations. Your battery uh, lifetime is very short and uh, capacities is also uh, limited, memory capacity. So these are some uh, limitations. And you can say other challenges like uh, auto configuration issues, Auto configuration issues like uh, every time you want to assign some address. If your uh, mobility will be there, your device will change from one location to another location. You also need dynamic addressing here. So address assignment thinking, and you also uh, want to discover the device again if will if will go out and then again comes back. Okay. So there is something called service discovery, which will also discover some services uh, for the devices which are connected to the network. Okay, ad hoc network. There are security issues also. Security issues in case of uh, wired network. If you have the wired network, um, there is a less possibility of your security, less possibility of uh, attacks. Okay, uh, but in case of um, this one, wireless security issues may be because this is ease of Daniel service can attack uh, and misbehaving nodes difficulty to identify. Uh, some nodes were misbehaving, and we cannot uh, identify the nodes because they are wildly linked. Okay, it is like difficult to identify those misbehaving nodes. Okay, uh, nodes can be easily compromised. Like uh, they can go down, and they can uh, they can be disconnected, or they can be frequently disconnected like that. 
so it is very difficult like security issues will, will always be there in, in the ad hoc networks as compared to your uh, wired network new applications and services so location based distribute some information to all nodes in a geographic area okay content based uh, query all sensors that sense something particularly in the past hour so these are some uh, challenges which will be occurring in the wireless uh, ad hoc networks is my voice is audible to all of you or any questions can anybody tell me if my voice is clear to all of you there okay we'll go ahead with the session so uh, this is the fact of mobility uh, of the protocol on the protocol stack okay so when you have the mobility on uh, uh, there 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 will always be effect on the mobile uh, protocol stack like from application to physical we already studied about the protocol stack like at the lower lower media, lower side we have the physical layer okay which will be taking care of the transmission and uh, reception okay so you can get some transmission error and reception errors while you are connecting with the wild wide uh, ad hoc networks so and they can also be some interference by some nearby devices okay so transmission errors interference can be happen in the physical layer again then in link layer link layer is basically your media access control layer when you go for media access control layer uh, here in this case hand off and at the network layer addressing network layer is most important Uh, thing is here in network layer we basically do routing and addressing okay uh, the packet fragmentation on the the network packet fragmentation and packet uh, routings uh, packet addressing if you want to assign some ip address to any packets which which you want to uh, transmit to some uh, destination that will be uh, done in your network uh, layer okay since your mobile device is rotating here and there like mobility will be there right so your addressing and your routing algorithms will change dynamically so we'll discuss like uh, what kind of routing algorithms uh, and how it differs when your mobility is there okay this is the effect of mobility on the protocol stack like from physical to application layer and now in case of transport in case of transport uh, layer basically handles the flow control and congestion okay how much uh, packet we want to uh, trans transfer from uh, your application layer to your another device okay so that congestion and flow control will always be will also influenced by this mobility and application will also affect okay so from application to physical everything will affect uh, in the protocol stack so this is basically your uh, infrastructure node and your infrastructure last node so as i already told you in the in case of infrastructure we need some access points we need some routers and that access point and that router is basically connected to your high speed uh, backbone wired lan local area network that is your wired if you want to connect to internet you need some access points so you need some router which will be connecting through your uh, wired lan okay in case of infrastructure node in case of infrastructure less node or distributed node or you can say ad hoc node ad hoc mode you are directly communicating from device to device there is no access point there is no infrastructure okay now uh, what is this uh, mobile ad hoc this is an autonomous system of modes mobile stations connected by wireless links okay so i told you mana does not necessarily need support from any existing network uh, infrastructure like an internet gateway or other fixed station fixed stations it does not need any internet gateway or fixed stations the network wireless topology may dynamically change in an unpredictable manner since nodes are free to move 
this is the point which i was talking about since nodes are free to move your wireless topology may dynamically change uh, depending upon that we need to change our routing algorithms also and uh, there will be dynamic uh, you need to dynamically figure it out what kind of intermediate nodes i have in now so that i can go and talk to my destination okay so in this case infection is transmitted in a store and forward manner in multi hop routing okay your information will be stored in some intermediate nodes and then it will be forwarded to some other destinations you need some multi hopping routing so you need some intermediate nodes here in this in the case of mobile uh, ad hoc networks each node is equipped with a wireless transmitter and a receiver with appropriate antenna we assume that it is not possible to have all nodes within each other's radio range so that's what so your one device that is your source another device is the destination there is a, there may, may not there is a possibility that your source and destination is not directly communicating there are some intermediate nodes which which are there between source and destination so when the nodes are close by within the radio range there are no routing issues to be addressed see if your nodes is nearby there is no routing issues no need of for routing algorithms you can directly talk to the nodes but your uh, destination is too far away from your device too far away far away from your source you might have some uh, intermediate nodes then you want to nodes you want to ga- give uh, your source address okay and you also want to give your destination address packet is coming from okay and where this packet wants to go so both these addresses needs to go to the intermediate nodes also so that intermediate nodes will decide okay this packet is coming from this source and this wants to go to this destination so we will talk about uh, in header like in the header we usually if we want some intermediates to connect to source to destination we usually give source address and destinations both in the same packet where we are putting the data also okay so that way your intermediate nodes come to know okay it is coming from your source node it is coming it is going from your destination nodes so at a given point in time wireless connectivity in the form of a random multi hop graph exists between the nodes so it will be kind of like multi hop so you need intermediate nodes in this case so this is one like uh, you can say some mobile stations are connected to each other through symmetric links and asymmetric links okay so your mobile station is connected to mobile station 3 here and like this uh, this is one ad hoc network mobile ad hoc network okay if your uh, station 2 wants to connect to mobile station 7 it cannot directly talk okay it will go to ms3 then ms1 ms5 and then ms5 here it will defi- uh, decide whether it needs to go to ms4 or it needs to go to ms6 okay that is what uh, your out- routing algorithms do okay we will discuss some of the routing algorithms so then pick uh, routing algorithms okay so network topology may change dynamically as the nodes are free to move second is your bandwidth constraint uh, it realizes throughput of wireless communication is less than the radius maximum transmitted and also collision uh, can occur uh, frequently because there might be possibility like uh, uh, the source is giving the data to the destination and intermediate nodes gets the data from the two uh, from the two path from the two path if it is getting the same data it will it can collide and it can uh, can collide and cannot uh, determine the actual source from where it is actually coming in this is one collision we will see in the next uh, slides how collision happens in this case uh, and also some characteristics like energy constant operations some nodes in the dark network may rely on batteries so battery will have less power so uh, your battery can down and then uh, this is one characteristic of adopters okay 
limited physical security and uh, physical security in the sense of like uh, there may be some attack of daniel okay there may be some security issues because it is wirelessly linked someone has some other device which is not uh, uh, authenticated that can hack your data because the data is going wirelessly there are wireless links here <coughs> <clears throat> okay so there are some applications as we like uh, discuss the applications uh, you can say virtual navigation if you want navigation like data from a remote data database is transmitted periodically in small relevant blocks using links present in the path of the automobile okay telemedicines uh, conference assistance from a surgeon of an uh, for an emergency intervention like from uh, like in, when you go in the hospitals uh, your surgeon will talk to your recipient or your recipient will talk to an emergency doctor like this so that communication will also depend on ad hoc networks like daily geo processing queries regarding location informations or of the users like if you want to find out the location of uh, the users uh, within particular region that is a geo processing that is also an application of this one crisis management and education via the internet okay all these can form an application of the ad hoc networks so now we now we know that uh, what is ad hoc networks? Uh, what is the application for ad hoc networks? Why we are studying the ad hoc networks? So the most uh, important thing in here is routing. Okay. So how routing uh, manage happen? So provide the maximum pretty, uh, possible reliability. Use alternative routes if an intermediate node fails. Okay, so suppose some intermediate node fails, it can also provide some alternative routes because there are so many intermediate nodes. So if you have so many intermediate nodes, we can have alternative routes to reach to the destination. Okay, choose a route with the least costs metric. So routing uh, algorithms are written such that they will choose a route which is having less cost. Less cost in the sense they will go of less number of intermediate nodes if i'm going with less number of intermediate nodes that means i'm utilizing less bandwidth and less uh, power of the devices okay we need to figure it out which is the shortest path to reach from shorts uh, source to destination give the nodes the best possible response time and throughput okay uh, this, these are all characteristics of the routing algorithms. Route computation must be distributed. Centralized routing in a dynamic uh, network is usually, uh, usually very expensive. Uh, centralized routing is usually uh, is very expensive as compared to dynamic networking. So routing computation should uh, not involve the maintenance of global state. Every node must have quick access to routes on demand. So there are two types of routing we will discuss. Like one is uh, table driven and one is source driven. So source driven is basically your on-demand routing. Okay. And table driven is like uh, you already have routing algorithms. You already have routing table already there in the desk. And they can directly communicate. But they, but their memory constraint be there. Always you need to also frequently we will discuss these things. Each node must be only concerned about the routes to its destination. Broadcast should be avoided highly unreliable. It is so broadcast should be avoided uh, in the case of routing. When you are uh, broadcasting from source to destination to find out from source to destination, that will basically uh, your uh, take away your network, your bandwidth. Okay, you will always be in the situation where you are always broadcast. To find out the suitable path to the destination, and you are not actually transferring the data. So broadcast should not be happen. Your routing working such that your broadcast should not happen. It should be less enough actually, very less. It is desirable to have a backbone route when the primary route has become stale. So in routing, it is desi desirable to have some alternate path to some have alternate back uh, backup route. Suppose if your primary route uh, becomes stale or becomes destroyed, you can use your uh, backup route. You can use your secondary route. Okay. So 
now how you are uh, so you know what are the characteristics of routing and what basically routing is okay why we are do doing the route any questions regarding routing <clears throat> so there are two types of classifications for routing one is proactive and one is reactive okay uh, when a packets needs to be forwarded the route is already known proactive routing is also called as table driven routing when you have table driven routing your route is already known with the help of routing table known and then you can directly go ahead and forward your packet whatever the packet needs to be forwarded okay. another one is reactive reactive means uh, you are actually kind of reacting whenever you want to send a packet Packet, you want to uh, you want to react or you want to want to initiate some packet right you source want to initiate or want to transfer some packet to the destination so this kind of routing is called source initiated routings so proactive routing can also called your table driven and reactive routing can also called your source driven so that's why we have like we are saying routing protocols may also be characterized as table driven protocols and source initiated on demand protocols on demand if you want you can Get the packets from source to destination. So this is your routing classification. So it is divided into two forms: table driven and source initiated on demand driven. In case of table driven, we have DSDV, WRP, CGSR. These are routing algorithms. In case of source initiated on demand driven, we have AODB, DSR, LMR, LBR, TORA, SSR. we're going to study uh, dsdv in table driven and uh, aodv and dsr in source initiated on demand driven this is we're going to study maybe i'll cover uh, dsr in this session today and in the next session we're going to cover uh, dsdv and aodv routing algorithms okay. so in case of table driven routing protocols each node maintains routing information to all other nodes in the network like each of the node which is connected within the network they needs to maintain some form of routing table some form of routing information of all the other nodes of all the other nodes okay what are nodes we have so the routing information routing table whenever any device comes in and out okay comes in or comes out, uh, goes out your routing table of all the devices needs to be updated in that case okay that is the only possible way we can actually maintain your routing tables once you know the routing table whichever the device wants to communicate to any of the destination device he can directly go and talk to that right because we have the routing table already there in the device they can directly find out the route and and the routing table is also updated frequently okay it needs to be updated frequently otherwise uh, we might have ending up some uh, packets errors okay we might have ending transmitting packets to the device which is not there in the network itself so that's why i'm saying the routing table needs to be updated frequently so that information is always there with which path to take from source to destination so when the topology changes updates are pop propagated topology changes means your device can go in and out or your device can move right it's a free so you need to maintain your routing uh, table every time okay the examples of uh, table driven routing tables is like uh, dstv destination sequence to distance vector routing cluster head gateway switch routing and wireless routing protocol we will study destination sequenced distance vector routing dsdv yeah. routing we study for table driven routing protocols
So here you can see, we will discuss in more depth in the next session, but this is just a glance of uh, what is basically your DSDB is. So it is based on uh, some algorithms, which is called Bellman for algorithms. Okay, we will see what is that Bellman for algorithm. Here, each mobile node contains a routing table in terms of number of hops to each destination. Okay. So routing table will have the information of how many hops we have, how many infrastructure nodes address, your MAC addresses of each and every uh, nodes within the network. So each and every stuff is maintained with the table. Routing table updates are periodically transmitted. So that's what I was talking about. So if some device goes out from the network, then somebody have to update that routing table periodically. Okay. Each entry in the table is marked by six tabs to distinguish stale routes from new ones and thereby avoiding loops. Okay. There will be some sequence number. Uh, and the sequence number will be differ from one device to another device. Okay. So there will not be any possibility like we have routing uh, one source to another source. Uh, we are actually like collision will not happen in this case if we have the sequence number. Okay. To minimize the routing updates, variable size update packets are also depending on the number of topological changes. Topological changes happens, mobility happens, uh, your routing updates will also happen. If we are not moving, we can actually minimize our routing updates. So this is basically your uh, destination sequence system vector. We we'll see uh, in the depth this algorithm, which is uh, this is the example of your uh, table driven routing, okay. your proactive routing. Proactive routing. Next, we will see source initiated on demand routing. This is a these are all the examples of like ad hoc on demand distance vector, dynamic source routing temporary ordered routing algorithms, associativity based routing, signal stability routing. These five are your source initiated, which you can say your uh, reactive algorithms, which will work uh, when is there is any demand to actually talk to your destination, to transfer packets from source to destination. Then only it will start uh, broadcast. First find out the route. First they will find out the route and then they will communicate. Okay. But in case of routing table, they already have the path. They can directly talk to the destination. So as, as I told you, we are going to study ad hoc uh, AODB and DSR, I think. That is DSR, yes. AODB and DSR, you will study for source initiated. Any questions up to here? You just take a break of three to four minutes. <laughs> if you have any questions, you can ask in the later uh, session, in the coming session slides or in the next session, we'll discuss in more detail DSD. Okay. As of now, it is just like uh, I have the slide for this DSTV. We will discuss in uh, more depth with the example we'll discuss. We will discuss DSTV for routing table and uh, DSR and your AODV. Any generic questions about uh, routing or uh, your networks? You can you may ask any questions regarding previous sessions also if you have. Or you can, or you can go ahead. Okay, we will go ahead with the whole session. Uh, next is the ad hoc on demand distance vector. Okay, uh, ad hoc 
on demand distance vector is, uh, is an improvement over dsgv uh, you may not understand this perfectly here we will go uh, after like uh, when we cover dsgv in detail and eodb in detail as of now you just uh, just you can say that eodb is basically an improvement which minimizes the number of required broadcast by creating routes on demand okay we will see uh, the algorithms then we can only see these things so i'm just skipping these slides for now so this is the first algorithm dynamic source routing which we are going to discuss today okay uh, how it works and then upon this knowledge we will discuss uh, what is the difference between your aodv and dsdv which are your table driven okay this is basically your on demand rate algorithms we'll discuss this first so this protocol consists of two major phases one is route discovery and another is route maintenance how route discovery happens and then how to maintain that route you need to see in this when a mobile node has a packet to send to some destination it first consult its route cache to check whether it has a route to the destination okay so what is it route cache is some local memory within the device actually okay so it will first search for the route cache whether we have uh, the destination uh, address or whether we have the route within the that cache or not if we don't have we will uh, kind of just broadcast some packets to find out the particular route to the destination okay so if it is an unexpired route it will issue this uh, it will use this route okay uh, what do you mean by unexpired route uh, like uh, once the route is determined there will be some timeout okay if timeout expires your route will expire okay then we again we need to broadcast the packet and then again we need to uh, maintain that for some particular interval of time then again timer inter interrupts uh, your timer expires your route will uh, expire so that's why we are checking into the route cache actually if uh, your route is unexpired route we can actually use that route itself there is no need to broadcast your packet to find out the next route because we already have the route for that particular destination for which you want to transmit the data okay now if the node that source node does not have a route it initiates a route discovery by broadcasting packet uh, route request packet there is defined packet actually so that will have some source addresses uh, and so on the destination addresses also okay it's it is not a data actually it is kind of management or control flow you can say just to create a connection first and just to uh, find out a route once you find out the route then only you can communicate with the device so if the node does not have a route it initiates a route discovery by bit so it will broad broadcasting means we are actually broadcasting the one packet from the source to all of the uh, nearby nodes okay we'll see this route request contain the address of the destination along with the source address as i already told you the route request packet will uh, have the address of the destination as well as the address of the source address so in this case each, each node receiving the packet checks see whether it has a route to the destination okay uh, who the intermediate nodes uh, after broadcasting if they receive the packet they will see in their again the root uh, cache will they will see whether they have the route for the destination or not if does not if uh, it does not have the destination uh, route it adds its own address what it will do it will add its own address to the packet and it will again broadcast that packet to the nearby routes or uh, to the nearby nodes okay and forward it's or you can say broadcast again broadcasting a route reply then uh, from that node a route reply will be generated a route reply is generated when the either the destination itself or an intermediate node that contains in its route cache an unexpired route to the destination okay here is the catch so what happens is like your route reply is a reply from your destination it should be reply from a destination but suppose your source have broadcasted some packets to the intermediate nodes 
and then intermediate nodes will find out uh, the address of the destination within its root cache. If it founds the root within its root cache, from there only it will uh, it will like pass on your uh, root okay, reply packet because uh, now we don't want any broadcasting because now we know which address we want to, because in the intermediate nodes we found the destination path okay but if we don't found the destination path we will go to the destination and then from destination we will actually transfer the uh, reply root packet okay so this is what it means a root, a root reply generated when the request reaches either the destination or an intermediate node that is in its root cache and an expired root to the destination if the node generating the root reply is the destination, it places the root record contained in the root request into the root uh, reply. Okay. If it is destination, it will contain the root request into the root reply packet, and it will transfer again back to the source. Okay. So now we will see uh, help of diagrams. This is not the good actually. We will see uh, here. Now, see here how basically a root discovery in DSR happens. So, here your S represents a node that has received reply request from uh, D from uh, S. Okay. okay, here we basically uh, trans want to transmit from uh, source to destination. Source is your S, D is your destination here, and then uh, you will transfer, uh, you will find out the route. How you will find out the route? You broadcast the transmission. Once you broadcast it, broadcasting means you are, uh, the source will actually put its own address into the packet. It will transfer to that B, C, and E. Okay. B, C, E will find that in the root cache. They will find the uh, path, root path to D in the root cache. If they doesn't find it, they will again broadcast it. Okay, they will again broadcast it. So once uh, when they will broadcast it, again E uh, will broadcast to F, C will broadcast to G. They will uh, own address within the packet. Okay, then once that transfer to F and G, again they will find out whether they have the root path in their root cache or not. If they don't found root cache. Root cache is that some memory. They will just have the memory to uh, uh, have the previous roots. Okay. If they found some previous roots which is unexpired, they will use that root. From there only it will uh, send the reply request packet. Okay. But it doesn't find. They will again broadcast it to J and K. They will again broadcast it to J and K. Again, taking your uh, uh, that is your F address and G address in the, the packet. Then again, J will again broadcast to D. Okay. So once J will broadcast to D, D is the destination which you want to send the data from S to D. Now here we got it. Okay. Now, since D is the destination, node D does not forward reply request because node D is the intended target. Node needs the target of the root discovery. Now we found out the root actually. So now we will send the reply request packet from destination to source. Okay. So this path we are actually taking. So how we are sending it, uh, how we are replying back to the source, we have taken this path, S, E, F, J, D. Okay, S, E, F, J, D. Now, this root will actually store in each of the root cache of each of the intermediate nodes. Okay, and then you start a timer. You will initiate a timer. But then timer expires, your root will actually expire. Again, we need to broadcast the same thing if we want to communicate again in future. And if your timer doesn't expire, 
we will uh, that we transfer the data we can actually use the information which is already kept in the uh, root caches within the intermediate nodes okay so this is how your uh, reply request the control masses will go towards destination uh, from destination towards source so here is um, basically root discovery so destination d on receiving the first reply request sends a root reply that is your rrp packet rrp is sent on a root obtained by reversing the root appended to received rrp how we will obtain that we will just reverse it so we got that right uh, we got s e f j d so we will reverse this we will go to j and then we will go to f we will go to e we will go to s so this is the root of your reply request packet okay because we are adding the uh, intermediate nodes also right the address of intermediate nodes also so if we reverse it we, we can directly go from destination to source so is sent on a route obtained by reversing the route appended to received re reply request so reply request uh, rrp packet includes the route from s to d on which our rrq was received by node d okay so this rrp will include the route from source d from source to destination so this is how your route discovery happens in your dsr any questions uh, related to route discovery and dsr algorithm you can take up your question if you didn't understand anyway okay somebody is asking about uh, the difference between broadcasting and flooding okay broadcasting is like uh, just like we, we just now see here see here this is the broadcast transmission so from your source you broadcasting means we are sending packets to multiple intermediate nodes we are broadcasting the packet actually okay there are so many uh, destination like b is your so many destination here so broadcasting the packet so flooding is one scenario where we comes up in the situation where we have lot of uh, broadcast transmission from uh, from one of the source or from other sources also suppose if also wants to broadcast something and g also wants to broadcast something we will be getting lot of uh, broadcasting packets from s e f g b h i j uh, b h e we have a lot of packets received by some nodes so node will actually be flooded with a lot of packets okay broadcasting the term where we actually broadcast uh, the multiple packets to the multiple hopes packets to the multiple intermediate nodes flooding is a scenario where we found uh, so many intermediate nodes broadcasting to some particular nodes and that then it will be flooded with those broadcasting transmission packets okay. any other questions So when node S wants to send a packet to node D, and does not find a route to D, it will initiate a route discovery, or it will initiate a broadcast transmission. And source node S floods route by request. Okay. Each node appends on identifier when forwarding a reply request. appending its own identifier just to make the uh, other intermediate nodes of their presence okay so 
this packet. Now you need to mint the uh, root. Okay. You want to maintain the route and uh, then you can actually transfer the packet on social destination. So node as on receiving uh, reply request pack uh, caches the route included in the RNDP packet. So once that node has received the reply from your destination, it will again uh, caches the route. Cache is the root in the sense it will store the route that route information within some memory, so that uh, again it no, need not to go to the again broadcasting and finding out the discovery uh, discovery of the node again discovery of the route. Okay, when node as sends a data packet to D, the entire route is included in the packet header, hence the name source routing. Okay, when you want to send some data from source to destination, your entire route will be in your uh, packet header actually. So each and every intermediate nodes will find out this packet needs to go to uh, yeah somebody is asking about this increase the uh, traffic is there any technique to control it definitely will increase the traffic actually and uh, we will see in some uh, next algorithm AODV where we will find out some adv advantages over this DSR okay we'll see how we can actually reduce this traffic. <sighs> Definitely it will incre increase your uh, broadcasting, broadcasting will increase the traffic actually. So how we can actually reduce this, we'll see. Okay, the name given source routing, uh, you know, uh, because we have the entire route within the packet header itself. That's why we are keep saying source route. The so intermediate nodes use the source route included in the packet to define to whom packet should be forward. So this is how your data delivers in DSR. Once you discover the route, S2, D, it will find out the SE, F, G, D. In all of the intermediate nodes, it will find out the uh, route and then it will go to destination. One of the disadvantages you find it out here is uh, your packet header in which you have the data actually that will increase in size because you have uh, the routing information also within the header, within the packet header. Your uh, packet header will increase actually. And that is also one scenario where you are actually increasing your traffic. Okay. So these kind of things, uh, like I mentioned, one of the device, we can actually uh, no need to trans transmit your uh, that uh, routing information every time within the packet in the back packet header. Okay. So that is your table driven actually can reduce some some of the traffic as compared to your uh, source driven your data uh, data delivery uh, on demand delivery of the data. So there is one uh, optimization here. How we can actually optimize like uh, with the help of caches. So once we find out the route, we, we can actually store that route within some part of uh, memory within the device. And uh, then next time, and we can increase the time interval of your timer, okay? That depends like, uh, you, you, know, you know, like uh, there is one packet, there is one bit in time to live, like how far your packet can go to the destination. Your time to live counter will decrease as per the hopes, number of hopes, okay? Once you go to next hope, it will decrease your time to live packet. There is one counter actually which will decrease. So, uh, each node caches a note, it, learns by any means. Uh, when node S finds like S E F G D to node D, node S also learns root S E F. Okay. So learning means they're kind of uh, putting their uh, their information into their caches. So once they, once they find out root, they will uh, they will keep that root in their cache memory. 
for some time till the timer is not expiring after timer expired your uh, your route will expire route information will expire when node key receives request the uh, root request from scg destined for node uh, node key learns about key gcs to node s okay so this is how actually they are learning uh, because how they learn because they'll get the source addresses source addresses embedded within the packet itself so they will always keep uh, maintaining the issue each intermediate node also will uh, have some caches so that is how we can actually optimize our uh, routing algorithm okay but the problem here uh, which can occur is like stale caches suppose if your cache is destroyed or if cache is uh, somehow it uh, got corrupted so that in that crease overheads okay because the information it's you're storing in the cache itself somehow your cache corrupted or some other data overwrite on the cache then again you need to do from start because you don't have any routing from source to destination now because that information is kept in the cache in this case but using uh, caches root caches you can actually optimize it but there is a problem in cache state so what are the advantages of dynamic source routing contains only between nodes who need to communicate okay source want to communicate to destination and once they find out the route within the route discovery transmission they will only keep that uh, routing information other nodes will not keep that routing information okay so um, so this will reduce an overhead of uh, route maintenance routing maintenance in case of table driven we will discuss uh, uh, next slide, uh, next session every node needs to needs to update the routing tables and they needs to maintain the routing tables but in this case we just need to maintain uh, for source and destination only and intermediate nodes only will uh, have some caches just to just store that route so routing caches can uh, further reduce some route discovery overhead okay so so route discovery overhead can be reduced right if suppose intermediate nodes is having uh, the route to destination in between only we can actually uh, transmit the reply request packet to the source from there only because from intermediate nodes onward to the destination we have the uh, route okay so that is how by using route caching we can actually reduce route discovery overhead we can reduce the time in discovering the route a single route discovery may yield many routes to the destination due to intermediate nodes replying from local caches okay so uh, this is how these these are some advantages of your uh, dsr dynamic source router now what can be the disadvantages here will some disadvantages you can easily figure it out now first disadvantages is your packet header size will uh, increase with the route length with your route increases your number of intermediate nodes will increase your uh, addresses of the intermediate nodes will increase and then if you store the intermediate addresses in the route uh, in the packet header itself your packet header size will increase that means you actually increasing your traffic also and the data is less it's kind of like you are transmitting addresses only okay so flood of route request may potentially reach all nodes in the network so flood of route request that's what the flooding flooding means you have broadcasting packets from so many uh, nodes togetherly they are coming to some some intermediate nodes and then it's it's kind of difficult for for that intermediate node to, to determine uh, which which route they need to figure it out okay so that flooding of route request may potentially reach all nodes in the network that will actually create problem in source discovery of the route route so there can be the potential collisions between root request propagated by the no neighboring nodes if suppose there are two uh, neighboring nodes and they broadcast to one intermediate node there may be some collision because 
that root is coming from the same source but again they collapse and they are colliding in some specific intermediate node okay so the, these are some disadvantages of routing uh, source discovery routing algorithm str insertion contention if too many root applies come back we do not supply using the local dashes okay today we are just covering uh, dsr any question regarding this dsr dynamic source uh, dynamic source routing you can ask in the next session we will discover uh, we'll discuss about ao Increase contention if too many root replies come back due to nodes or replying using their local cache. Root reply storm problem. I'm not clear with this uh, actually the storm problem. Uh, in the next session, uh, I'll tell you what is this root reply storm problem actually. As of now, I don't have clear uh, idea of this. So we'll discuss in the next session this one. So I hope you got an idea of what is routing is, what is minute ad hoc network is, and uh, how routing happens, what are the classification of routings. And uh, we discuss one type of routing that is your source driven routing. And uh, we'll discuss table driven, and then we'll discuss yeah, uh, the difference between source driven and source driven. I think we are done with the today's session. In the next session, we'll discuss two more algorithms which are left, then our uh, session will be over.